So let's get going. Um, first and foremost, I want to talk about my class, which is the Necromancer. Um, now, it seems very consistently agreed upon, and you can see this in the leaderboards if you just go to the leaderboards and look at challenge rifts, etc., that power to power, the Necromancer in PvE seems to be the top. Okay, Necromancers have great way to farm in the overworld. They have great ways to do deal with the challenge rifts. They're fairly safe because of the summons and the builds they have. They have good utility. Um, and then in PvP, they're also good enough where you could argue they're one of like the two or three best classes in PvP. We'll talk about some of the other ones. And so in my personal opinion, um, picking the Necromancer for me, I do not regret. I think the Necromancer is actually uh, like god tier basically and is disgusting. Now, now let's move on to the other classes. Um, for me, I think this is going to be one of the only classes in S plus tier. The, why do I say one of the only classes? Well, I think that because I've seen demon hunters popping off and I haven't seen many people talk about this, but I actually believe the demon hunter might be the best class in the entire game. I've seen some demon hunters absolutely destroy and melt people in battlegrounds even without high resonance. Like, I've played many matches where there's people who are not well, is playing as Demon Hunter, absolutely rolling people by playing correctly. And on top of it, I was under the impression that they're PvE, PvE single target damage build gods, but you go into PvP and they're actually quite good as well. On top of the fact that they're the, the only class other than a Mage Alt that can actually move while attacking, or the Crusader horse, I suppose, um, they can do it on their basic, which is insane. If you go ahead and put the ability where you can target anywhere you want, the basic attack is uh, much easier to use, and it, it's a very enjoyable class too. So I think it's it's either S or S+, plus. okay? I'm going to put it right here in S, but it could really go either one of these ways, okay, in my own personal opinion. I think people are sleeping on Demon Hunter, just in my own opinion. Barbarian, I actually want to put S for PvP, but A for PvE. Here's the thing, I, I think Barbarian is actually worse than we originally anticipated, because I think Barbarian is one of those things that's hard to deal with, hard to work with, um, when you're constantly getting bodied uh, by the way that they have the cheat death, etc. However, once you kind of get how they work, it's basically about kiting them and CCing them as much as possible, and it's not really as bad. Now, granted, if we're talking a if we're talking Giga Chads to Giga Chads, like everyone's maxed out, Barbarian probably creeps up a little bit because of the PvP, but in PvE, I haven't really been that impressed with them. They're mostly like gathering stuff with Whirlwind, buffing us with Shouts, etc. I just haven't really felt the impact of the Barbarian as much, and I feel like maybe their single target damage on the bosses doesn't really seem um, as significant as maybe I would, I would like, for instance. But then again, um, Barbarian's cheat death is so annoying that it, it, it makes me want to even bring that up higher on the, just because of the PvP, but I have to consider all aspects of the game. And if I ask myself, do I think they're better in PvE than Demon Hunter? The answer is absolutely not even close. And do I think that they're better in PvP than Demon Hunter? The answer is maybe. So for that reason, I feel like I have to put Demon Hunter um, ahead of them. Okay, you're welcome to argue that point if you would like. Now, Moving on here, I think I went to cover Crusader because Crusader is one of the ones that I think is more popular as well. In my personal opinion, Crusader is S tier, maybe S plus tier. In fact, I think I might want to put it at S plus. And the reason I'm going to do this is because in a party, not having a Crusader uh, basically lowers your damage output uh, significantly to the point of you're going to notice the impact of the speed of your runs. Crusader that has the banner that moves with them all the time that makes it where everyone in your party has 100% crit rate is a way that you can nuke bosses and cut massive time slots off of things like dungeon runs, which take a really long time. They're great in overworld farming. They're actually good in PvP as well. The reason I put them in S plus is because they're so consistently good across the board that I feel like it, whenever you're thinking, okay, what other class do I want in my party? The first class you always think of is a Crusader. And because this game is so heavily dictated upon parties, basically, I personally believe that the Crusader is in fact S plus tier almost from that point of view. Maybe if the game was a solo game, you can play with other people, I would drag the Crusader down, maybe even A tier, S, maybe even A tier, okay? But because of this game is so party influenced, it makes the Crusader so much better because I always want a Crusader on my team. And they also have just some really good moves also. They're not low on damage or anything like that. And they're also scary in PVP. So in my personal opinion, I really like the Crusader. Now that's gonna leave us with the last two, which are Monk and Wizard, uh, which we did on purpose here because they got buffed and we want to see 
see where they're gonna go in there now. I think I was the most wrong about Monk. I think Monk is actually S tier. Reason being is because they're so good in PvP, I think it overrides maybe the PvE is not as great. And I also think that because overworld farming in particular is strong, their overworld farming isn't bad. They have some combos that can make them move quite quickly with the teleporting between the minions, etc. They can gather them up quite quickly and their overworld farming isn't actually that bad. And because of that, um, that's a huge part of the game, to be honest, is farming the overworld. So I don't actually mind that that much. I would say maybe uh, for PvE, the monks could be slightly better, but honestly, it's really about the PvP for me with the monk. I believe like the monk is extremely difficult to work with in PvP, has a lot of ways of basically removing you from the map. It's almost like invulnerability frames because they have a lot of times where you can't actually hit them. So it feels like you're almost fighting like a street fighter type of person. I actually think the monk is super exciting. Um, and here's something I wanna say, the wizard, Here's the problem with this list. I have C and D, and you're gonna notice I'm gonna have like no one in these tiers. And the reason, we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put the wizard here. I'm just gonna drag this off for now. Um, the reason I don't have anyone in these other tiers is because I think every class is good. I think it's really like nuanced power levels. These are anime characters where it's like, they're all super strong, but he's so strong he can blow up a galaxy. Well, he can blow up a universe. Like that's basically what we're talking about here is that all of these classes are completely viable. However, I almost want to put Wizard and Barbarian like this, to be honest. I, this is kind of, the more I do it, the more I, I'm leaning towards here, because the reality is people are probably gonna want something like this, where it's Wizard and Monk um, are lower here, and Barbarian and Demon Hunter here, and Necromancer and Crusader. This is probably conventional wisdom. I think this is wrong, because what's actually happening here is, I think Wizards are just straight up better in PvP than Barbarians. I think Monks are straight up better in PvP um, than the Monks, uh, or, or than the Barbarians as well. Like, I'd rather have a Monk than a Barbarian. I'd rather have a strong Wizard in the 8v8, like the Battleground type stuff, than I'd rather have a strong Barbarian. And if I was in the Riot of the Exile, maybe I'd bring the Barbarian, for instance, okay? Whereas I think the wizard is good in all things. It's good in challenge rifts, has lots of CC available as well. Whereas the barbarian doesn't have quite as much CC. The wizard has uh, CC available. Their damage output is actually insane. And whenever you see like a Giga Chad barbarian versus a Giga Chad wizard, the wizard's gonna be popping off way, way harder. The barbarian might die less, survive longer, but the wizard's gonna be popping off harder. I think the wizards are actually being slept on a pretty good amount right now. And even though, this is almost the opposite of what I thought the tier list was before with Barbarian way up here. I almost want to say Barbarian is the last class I would want to pick, and this is the order of which I would pick. Again, look, I'm not shitting on any of these classes. We could literally do this, and this would be a fair tier list too. The only reason I'm dragging Barbarian down is because I feel like it's melee, so, and it doesn't have the teleport like Monk. It's worse in PvP while being melee than Monk. And to be honest, I feel like if I brought Kyra Mobile in here to talk about the Barbarian, he might actually agree with this point too, because, um, I think a lot of Barbarians will probably be class changing out to try other things into the future uh, once you get past kind of the funness of like the Whirlwind plus the Cheat Death and you know your buffs and stuff. I think there's some other, other classes people are gonna be wanting trying out. So in the final, I'll bring the Barbarian up from A to S tier just because of the pure survivability and the buffs they can do as well. And then this is probably a more reasonable list, but this right here, either or, that's my tier list. Let me know what you think of this tier list again. I'm not God's, I'm not God's gift to tier list or anything. This is just a personal opinion and from what I've seen from playing the game. Love y'all. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way, because 70% of the people who still watch this channel every day aren't subscribed. So just a heads up. If you're one of those people, consider hitting that thumb. I do appreciate your time.